right, welcome Cash and Dinner. I'm Stefan. Today I'm joined by Allison, and we're here in beautiful Oregon. We just got here a couple days ago, and you might be wondering what I'm doing here. I got myself a little shovel. This is a clam shovel, and hopefully we'll put it to use to find some gaper clams. That's what we're here for. We've never done it, so the tide is going down. It's a minus tide. Should be a great time to get in the mud flats and hopefully look for some of these clam show it's usually a good size hole especially the bigger ones that's what we'll be looking for and hopefully we'll get a few bring them home cook them up and try these bad boys let's go digging oh there it is it's right there see it the big one yeah first one I'm gonna dig by hand here oh yeah that's a nice one yeah. you can see this little hole I put my hand in the hole and I could see the siphon get pulled. Oh man, that's a nice one. Look at this beauty. Nice. First oh, one. That is a gaper. Oh yeah, it is. So you see that little gap and that's what comes up. It was like this and it came all the way from here to the top. Yeah. So it extends a lot. That's beauty. Wow. That's awesome. First one, let's keep digging. That didn't take long. We just got here. Awesome. Let's find more. Looking for big holes. It's a big clam. You can see the, the head right here sticking out. Oh! That's a good size one. Drop it down. You want me to dig this time? It's okay. Just gotta dig wide so we don't cut it. Ah, I can see the head still. Contracting, see that's the hole right there. You know it's in there. You know exactly where it's going now. Got its number. Let's go a little wider. And this thing's deep. That's what we're after. That's a big one. Yeah, that's that's more like it. Wowzers. <laughs> Another beauty. You can see the, the head right here. And uh, yeah, sucks it back in. That's a beauty. Nice. There's a second one. Cousins. And uh, that's a workout. <laughs> no, nothing like the cockles with the rake and them on top this you actually have to dig we got a hole now this time Allison is on the shovel you gotta go white so you don't cut it because it's easy to damage them that's why these you can't release by law you have to keep see the hole it's right there now you're gonna have to go a little bit wider Allison There's a little gravel in here, so it's not just sand. We got a big one here. Oh yeah. Look at the size of this thing. Oh wow. That's a big one. That's a good one. Yeah, bigger than mine. Oh, well, this is a trophy gaper clam right here. That was a big one. Oh, he's got a little crab in there. Look at that. Crab. Oh you can see it right there. So, I don't know what it's doing, if it's eating it or this is hiding in it. Either way, it's kind of stuck. But uh, let's keep digging. It's a lot of fun. This one had to reach pretty deep. And uh, can't wait to try them. Allison found another hole. See what she found? I put my finger in and I felt it going down. So, he's got to be in there. This is sandier, a little bit easier. Yeah, easier to dig. And I felt it. A lot of worms. Look at those blood worms everywhere. Look, those are all blood worms. Crazy. Look at that. Blood worms. I've never seen that many. They're babies, but still blood worms. It's too small to use for bait, but a little slow. Until we find it. Must be a big one, Allison. It's way down. 
Can't even compare them. See the gaper is here. That's called a soft shell, not native. Yeah, soft shell, and it is softer shell, so makes sense. This here is a messy sport. Yeah, you got to get down and dirty. Yeah, nothing like that. Yesterday, those cockles were breezed. Oh boy, this thing is stuck. Where are you going? Beautiful. It's all over. Literally. It just started right there. Oh, look, look, a baby flounder. Yeah. There. <laughs> we got him. Uh, tiny, tiny. That's the other one right here. You can feel it. See, that's a good size. Two finger wide. That's. That's, you know, definitely what we're looking for. It is a nice little shovel, I tell you. That's a big rock. Still gonna be a good eater. Just crack the side of it a little bit. But that's all right. That's what we're eating right here. It's not damaged, so we're good to go. Another beauty. We're in a roll, but that's what I'm looking for. That's the size right here. This is the size of the hole I'm looking. I can feel that thing sucking right in. I can follow the angle. Got a little aggressive. But uh, still gonna be fine. Man, oh man. What an amazing place. Barely anyone, really. Considering it's Memorial Day. And we haven't gone in you know, but 20 yards since we started digging and we found a pile already. And we'll go for it. Looks like a sandy area. Sandy earth. Just gotta slow and steady. Alright, so I know exactly where it's at. Oh, got water now. That wasn't smart. It's like dredging here. <laughs> Size. That's a good one. Yeah. 
You definitely worked hard for that one. <laughs> That's a tricky one. I just found a hole. I put my finger in and it squirted water out at me. Yeah, here's so the hole. Going that Stephon angle. is digging. So, that don't look too, too big, but you see. You're looking for big holes. Exactly where it's at. That helps. Because I can dig confidence I'm not gonna break anything. Look at all those worms. I used to pay a lot of money for those blood worms. They're a dime a dozen here. Yeah, but like, these have a little hook. They're the coolest little thing. Never seen one? These are no regular worms. See they have a little almost hair on the side. And then when you you get close to the head, the head pops out and it tries to hook you. It's uh it's right out of a horror movie. <laughs> it just did it. Well, there he goes. See that? That's Maybe the... that's what squirted at me. No. But yeah, that's a blood worm right there. Oh, there he goes. See that? They have a little hooks on the end. Anyways. Turning into a, a mud digging machine. See, that's the top of it right there. And the, the problem here is that there's a whole lot of little rocks. Makes it a lot harder. A lot harder. Oh, the, we just had a squirter behind me. Got a two-hander on this one. It's just the rocks. All right, there it goes. Whew. Had to work for this one. Oh, another squirter behind yeah. you. Have to work for that one. This is our prize right here. Get the clam. It's right there, right there. Be careful. Yeah, yeah, it's just the tip right there. So it's right here. So you get to dig by hand, Allison. Yeah. I'll help you get a couple rocks, but you can feel the shell. Now you get to have fun with it. Oh no, I think I need yeah. to. There's no way I can pull this thing out. You're gonna break well, it? Well, you go get it. I can't oh, get Come on. There's no way. Don't there's give up on the. There's you no, gaper clam. There's no way that I'm gonna pull that thing out of there. Oh, it's right there, Allison. I think I'm more the cockle queen than the gaper king. <laughs> well, it's not easy. I'm not gonna lie. It is not easy. I <laughs> I can't pull that thing out. Of there. I would need I would need to have it dug a lot more than that. <laughs> Ooh. I'm, I'm, I just I don't have a great grip on it, but it's coming. Not a big one. Uh, I just kind of wiggle it in a circle. It is fun just watching you. <laughs> well, it's coming. I got it from the bottom now. But it is a totally different deal here. Hey, look at that. Nice. Nice one. Oh, nice. Another one bites the dust. Pretty. Pretty shells. Big. Oh man, I'm getting tired. <laughs> well, this was a lot of fun and a lot of work. But I've got it done, so it matters. I got myself a nice limit of nice fat gaper clams, and I got one soft shell clam. So, didn't take too long, but now the tide is starting to come in. It definitely was a great idea to bring my waders. I got hip waders you really have to go on your knees like I did and really get down in there and down and dirty but hey totally different I've never done anything like this it was a lot of fun can't wait to try them at this point we think we're gonna make a chowder out of them so we're gonna process them come along to the kitchen we'll see you there digging for those gaper clams was a hoot but now it's time to turn our work all that digging into an amazing chowder so this is the biggest one I got. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna process it. You just need a good knife. So you're using a good, you know, fillet knife. You want the blade to be a little soft on the end there. So it's just easier to contour the inside. And that's basically what I'm gonna do first is get my knife on the inside. And just, there's two adductor muscles. There's one here and one there. So keeping that in mind, you wanna make sure you get really close to the shell and just contour it as I just said go all the way 
That's it. Not much to it, really. And then, you should be able to pop it, just like that. There's a little membrane too. Right there, cut that off. So this one is a big one, so I'm gonna save for a souvenir. It's a little messy, so you wanna be by the sink. All right, so here's one of the adductor muscle right here. The other one is right here, a little white. And that's our neck right there. So the meat is basically these adductor muscles. You have the foot right in here. That's the foot. And basically the neck is full of meat right here because obviously that's a muscle that's extending and contracting. So what I'm going to do next is basically just cut the other end here. Just follow like I did earlier the inside so I can get the adductor muscle there too and just free up the rest of the critter really. And once that's cut, usually you can pull the thing right off just like that. All right, there we go. Now you can see better, adductor muscle, adductor muscle. So we're gonna pull those off. Look at that, that's some nice tender meat right here. Oh yeah, here's one. The other one's right here. Really easy to peel right off, really. Now, as I said, we have the foot and it's right in here. That's some nice meat right there too for the chowder. So we're gonna cut that off too, right there. And then we're left with the neck and all this. That's also good, but we don't need this mess right here. So we're just gonna cut that off just like that. That we discard. And then we're left with this. Yeah, I know, might not look very appetizing, but wait until we turn into a chowder. Now, there's two holes, so what we're gonna do is basically get into the bigger hole right here. I'm gonna slide our blade all the way down, and we're gonna come out on the other side right here. This is gonna cut right across. There's another hole right here. So all I'm doing is just going in the middle, cutting right through, and then we open it. And that's what we got right here on this beautiful meat and a little crab to boot. Those little pea crab hang out in there in this gaper clam. They're kind of funky looking. Could be good bait, but that's it. How easy was that? Some people will actually use this for sushi. I hear it's great, never had it. A lot of people too will pound this meat, strip it, and basically fry it up, and I hear that's great too. So I'm just gonna clean this. So you get the two adductor muscles here, the foot, and obviously here is the uh, siphon, the neck there. That's just a lot of meat. Beautiful looking meat. Now, clearly we're not gonna eat the skin. That would be uh, no good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna freeze our meat. And when I say our meat, we're gonna save those little adductor muscles. They're really tender. We're not gonna use them for the chowder. You could, but they're so tender, we're just gonna fry them up and eat them. But this is gonna be perfect for a chowder. So what we're gonna do is by freezing it, it's gonna make it super easy to peel that skin right off when we're ready to make our chowder. Because we're in Oregon and we're traveling home, it should be easier to make our chowder there. So what I'm gonna do is just stuff it and just go like this. Close it, go like that, and that's how we're gonna freeze it, just like that and bring it home. There's two other ways you can get rid of that skin. One way is to actually just put this for 30 seconds in boiling water, and you should be able to strip the skin right off. And another method is to actually just try to get the water from the tap as hot as possible and let it sit for a few minutes, and the skin should peel off pretty easily. So those are the three methods. We're gonna use the freeze method. So we're gonna see you back home. I'm gonna keep processing these bad boys. I'm gonna cook these up later. If you want, we'll show you. Can't wait to try them. They'll be perfect. We're just gonna saute them. It's gonna be some awesome eating right there. We fried up some of the gaper clams adductor muscles. Let me do a little taste test here. Yeah, very sweet. Very tasty. Just a little butter, a little garlic. Mm. Super simple. It has great flavor. Yep. Right here. Nice little treat. 
Mmm. Look at that. Wow. They're excellent. Mmm. I love seafood. Fresh like this, you just can't beat it. We'll see you in the other kitchen where we're going to prepare those gaper clam for a nice chowder. We'll see you there. Mmm. Well, as you saw, Stefan had a ball digging for those clams. It was a little rough for me, so I didn't get to do as much of the digging. But guess what? I get to cook and I get to turn those clams into an, an amazing New England clam chowder. So earlier today, we prepped those beautiful gaper clams. Going to show you a quick clip of how we processed them, cleaned them up, tenderized and chopped them. So the clams have been rinsed. Now we're moving on to the next step, which is pounding and tenderizing. guys we're ready for step number one step number one is to brown the bacon in a large saucepan over medium heat for about five minutes so it's been five minutes we are now adding our five tablespoons of butter into the pot melting that butter in with the bacon So we added our onions and our carrots, and we're gonna saute these for five minutes. Next, we're adding our leeks. And our baby reds. And we're gonna saute these for another two to three minutes. Now while we have the leek and the potatoes added in, we're also going to season with our salt and pepper. Now you know you're ready for the next step when your leeks and your onion are slightly translucent. So that means it's time to add our corn. And thyme. I wish you could smell this. It's unbelievable. I'm salivating. The vegetables are ready, so we're gonna sprinkle the flour on top of the vegetables, and then we're gonna mix it in, and that's gonna make us a nice roux. It's gonna help thicken. Now you don't want any clumps of flour. 
So now that that flour is evenly dispersed in our vegetables, we're going to stir and cook for three minutes. So it's been about three minutes. We're adding the clam juice. So what I'm doing is I'm just whisking it a little bit because we want to make sure that there's no lumps or clumps of flour and that it's totally dissolved in the clam juice. So we're turning the heat down to medium low. We're going to let this simmer for about eight minutes in order to let it thicken up. And once in a while we're going to stir just to make sure it doesn't burn and stick to the bottom. So guys, check this out. It's looking great. It's definitely thickened up. So guess what? It's time for the main ingredient, our gaper clams. We're going to add those into the pot. Our one and three quarters cup of milk. So we're going to mix in the clams and the milk and then we're going to let it cook for about 12 to 16 more minutes and then it'll be ready to serve and boy do we have a surprise for you. Panera bread has nothing on us. Man, look at that. Wow, look at this chowder. It looks amazing. I'm sure it tastes just as good. Can't wait to dig in. I just gotta show you this presentation. Bread bowl like that, my goodness. Mm. This is by far not only the best clam chowder I ever had, but the best soup. I kid you not. All the flavors come together. Perfect amount of everything. I'm speechless. Hmm. I just don't want to stop eating. It's that good. Nothing better than getting to eat your bowl. Man, I'm a lucky girl. As I'm eating this chowder, I just had a realization that there's a reason why these things bury themselves so deep in the muck. They're pretty smart, really. That's what I'm realizing. Because if they're any shallower, there wouldn't be any laugh. I promise you, these things are that good. Whew. Smart clowns. I sure did a number on that one. Man, that was really, really good. Memorial Day weekend, Oregon. Definitely didn't disappoint. The first morning, we caught our limit of cockle clams. Turned it into an amazing linguine and white clam sauce. If you didn't see that video yet, check it out. And then the next day, caught up with these gapers. Stefan worked hard digging them out of all that muck, arm wrestling with them so that we could make this phenomenal New England clam chowder soup. And in the bread bowl, it was just perfect. And to boot, he went diving and was able to just pick up Dungeness crab after Dungeness crab. That's basically what we fed ourselves on the entire time that we were in Oregon. And that video is coming soon, so if you want to see how Stefan loaded up on Dungeness Crab and some of the meals that we made with that, definitely look out for that video. Hey, thank you guys so much for coming along on this adventure. We really appreciate it. Hope to see you next time. Till then, ah, we're out.